Okay class, so good morning. Today we are going to discuss uh, flexural members or these are the members subject to bending moments and they are called normally as beams. So these are the following assumptions in the analysis of uh, reinforced concrete uh, beams or members. So the first assumption is on the usable compressive strain of concrete used as a basis for your strength design method. And this is epsilon Cu is equal to 0 0.003. So uh, we know that strain is simply uh, your deformation all over uh, a unit length. So, uh, if we have here a unit of uh, length in millimeter and the unit of delta in millimeter, so the unit will just cancel out and that's the reason why the epsilon uh, Cu or the ultimate crushing strain of concrete is dimensionless. So, for the usable tensile flexural strength of concrete, for working stress design procedure, your FCT is equal to FR is equal to 0.62 square root of FC prime. So this is now also called the uh, modulus of rupture. For the modulus of elasticity of concrete in megapascal, which is applicable to both strength design and working stress design, your uh, modulus of elasticity is equivalent to 4,700 square root of Fc prime. You call this the second modulus of elasticity, uh, which uh, simply differentiate it from the tangent modulus. For the steel properties, these are the assumptions made. Uh, it is assumed that steel is elastic, perfectly plastic. And if you are going to test a steel in tension, this is what your graph will look like. No? A similar graph can actually be plotted when you test your steel in tension. So the part here is the elastic range and this is the plastic range. And the portion here where your curve suddenly Um, goes high up to a maximum equivalent to Fu and then goes down again to the rupture point is called the strain hardening. For the modulus of elasticity of steel, the equivalent value used is 200,000 megapascal. So this is assumed to be constant even though steel strength Fy and Fu varies from one steel to the other. So there's assumption here that for flexural or bending behavior, the strain compatibility always exists. This strain compatibility assumption simply states that plane sections remain plane before and after bending. So if you have here
a drawing were in a beam simple beam subjected uh, to a positive bending moment your flexural stress strain diagram can actually be taken considering this part of the beam where in the original okay this is the original fibers at any location along the beam is actually experiencing a strain on top and a strain at the bottom so since this is a positive bending the fibers at the top part is actually in compression so these fibers here are in compression and the bottom fiber is in tension take note that this is only true when the beam or the member bends in a positive bending so when you draw now the stress or the strain diagram your strain on top will experience a maximum compressive strain epsilon top and the strain at the bottom or the fibers at the bottom will experience a maximum tensile strain epsilon bottom so this compatibility assumption states that this plane or this of line here which is originally plane will still remain plane after bending so this shows now what compatibility is all about So for the stress strain relationship for plain concrete section we have studied in your concrete properties that there are two stages in the behavior the first stage is what you call the elastic stage and the second stage is what you call the inelastic stage so for the elastic stage There are two sub stages which supports the working stress design procedure. So your WSD is actually the working stress method and your SD the strength design method so in the two stages in the elastic stage these two stages differs with each other only on the assumption that at WSD first stage this is still on the stable condition while your uh, stage 2 here so begins to become unstable or at stage 2 for WSD your concrete now is in the verge of instability as far as cracking of the fibers are concerned
So for the inelastic stage, which defines your FC to be 0.5 of FC prime, your inelastic behavior now will start and therefore the concrete will then start to become unstable. So there are three stages, as I've mentioned, which will define your RC beam behavior. The first is the uncrack elastic stage, as shown a while ago on the graph. The second one is the crack elastic stage. And the third one is the crack inelastic stage. So these two are still on the elastic stable and this is the inelastic unstable behavior so for stage one the concrete is stable up to about 30 percent of your fc prime and the material behaves in an elastic manner so no cracks in the transition zone since your ft is less than FR. So remember that FR here is the modulus of rupture as defined under assumptions above and FT is the actual tensile stress as computed by the flexure formula. So for your section the whole section is not is still uncracked no inst instability in the matrix and the stress strain is proportional following the compatibility assumption and your stress the, uh, is also proportional following the strain distribution For stage 2, the concrete cracks but still but it's still elastic up to about 0.50 Fc prime, meaning to say that your uh, um, matrix is still stable, but the cracks propagate in the tension now because your Ft is already greater than Fr. And the stress and strain distribution is still linear. So the concrete is in tension is neglected and the tension stresses are now carried by the steel. Okay, so uh, for the WSD stage 2, this part of concrete is actually neglected because the portion has already cracked. Intention, but still the remaining part is stable in compression. So the stress strain still compatible, meaning to say that these are represented by straight lines, but the only difference is that the tensile stresses now is directly carried by the steel. Okay. So the tensile stress is no longer carried by the concrete, but the steel takes care of it. For stage 3, the concrete enters the inelastic deformation. So the part of the concrete compression is beginning to become unstable and the strain distribution is still linear but the stress distribution is no longer linear. No? So notice that 
here, compatibility in strain is still true, but compatibility in stress is no longer true. So from the original straight line, your stress distribution now here in the compression zone becomes almost parabolic. And that shows or uh, demonstrates how the beam behaves in the three stages. We're going to solve for an example on our next video.